Hey there, friends. Happy Tuesday to you. I hope wherever you are, you are having a fantastic day. I've got a couple new journals to go in the shop today. This is a pattern that, uh, this is a fabric pattern that I used last week, and it kind of flew out like a hot cake, and so I thought, well, let's do another one of those. Um, I really do like the white against the gray. Uh, there's just something really cool about the colors of this that I really do like. This is a brand new fabric. It is such a fun thing to just look at. It's very bright, very colorful. I'm going to call it splat because it just looks like paint splats, you know, like you're throwing on paint on a canvas. I, I just really, I liked it. It reminded me of childhood for some reason or another. I finished this journal off really simply with um, with plastic beads and a few glass beads thrown in. And I wanted to show you this super cool uh, binding. Uh, this is, of course, not embroidery floss. It is a thin kind of yarn. And I think that Carol sent this. I'm not sure, but it was either Carol or Kathy. And I really dig it. One of the nicest things about it is that I can um, I can thread these uh, beads that have skinny you know skinny holes onto this by using a needle, and the needle fits nicely um, on this really thin kind of yarn. But anyway, I really do like it. It, it just brightened my day. This whole little thing brightened my day. <laughs> it was just fun to play with. Let's take a peek inside. And I did use colors kind of on the inside that sort of reflected the cover of the piece of the little book. Uh, lots of fun hairy paper clips for you to play with. We've got your story element here in your storybook as well. An envelope that I just absolutely adored. These are from 1998. It's called the Boyd's Collection. Um, and it features bears and hairs. Uh, many years ago when my children were very small, when my older son was small, I hand-painted stationery for people. And I specialized in bears. Now, that was very you know, kind of hip in the 80s and, you know, 90s, but not not a, not a whole lot now. But it was a really nice little throwback piece, I thought. And we do have our house plans. You know, if you're planning on thinking of a move or, I mean, I think it's fun to just plan your dream house. And don't say you'll never have it because you might. So attention, you know, to, to detail, to all of the things that you enjoy, that you like, should always be a part of your home. Um, dream home or not, you know. Your, you know, your your shelter is your home. It's your anchor, and it should always be beautiful and to your liking. This is some more fodder from Venice, and this I love the cello player here. She's very, she's really emoting on her um, instrument there. Venice Secrets, the Crime and Justice Exhibition. Carol, uh, Kathy made these, you guys, uh, it, and it says Magic World, and I thought that would just be the perfect little tag to put in this little piece. Um, I, I just thought it would be absolutely cool because it is a magical world in Venice. This is a Schooly Grand de San Rocco. Um, look at this. And this is what you see. You know, you uh, there was construction going on very close to the hotel where we were staying in Venice. And I just peeked in and took a few pictures. And you could see the remnants of something like this being brought back to life. Very uh, inspiring. I've got some tags for you to play with. This is a pocket full of fabric scraps and paper scraps to have fun with. A little tag. More of the um, bears and hares. Isn't that sweet? I just love like it's a, a bear and a mama bear. And this has got this little bitty baby bear right here. Really cute. I think that this was the, uh, yeah, this is the water taxi that went around the lagoon in Venice. The water taxi was a really fun experience. You know, you kind of, it's like that hop-on, hop-off bus that we did in Rome. Um, 
where you just kind of, that's what you do. You hop on, you hop off. You buy a ticket, and then you can ride the water taxi all day or for a couple days. I think there's even like a 72-hour um, water taxi ticket. But it was a lot of fun to ride it and to, actually, it's just fun for me to be on a boat and on the water. I do not swim. I have no idea why I am so enamored with water and I want to live close to water. I think it's because our bodies are made up of a whole lot of water. And maybe, you know, I'm just getting back to my basics. I cut us some uh, paper flowers. I was uh, kind of at my wits end the other night. And I, I still wanted to do something creative. And I thought, well, I'll just take some magazines. It was time to recycle. And I will cut them up and make everybody some sweet paper flowers. I love to do that. Everything has so much beauty, and that's true no matter what. You, you can look around and see something good or positive or wonderful in almost everything. You know, I said almost in everything. Everything has beauty to it. This is our texture signature. It features a napkin, um, a deli paper, tissue, bling, prima flowers, metal tape, wood, styrofoam, very pretty papers for you to play with. You know, it's all about um, creating depth and texture and layers. Uh, layering is just fun. I can't, um, can't describe it. You know, you just start sticking things on and building things up. And then a lot of times, um, there's an artist, her name is Fenabar. I know that's not her name, but I think that's what she goes um, by. And she will stack and stack things, and then she paints it all white. And then she goes back and um, sprays. It's a beautiful technique, you guys. Uh, check out Finnabar. It's just, it's really cool, and it's a great way to use like the layers that you'll find in this uh, in this second signature of these books. Oh my goodness, Gail made this. She took a tag. And she put fabric scraps on it. And I think it's just the coolest thing ever. I love that Gail sent a note with this that said, Hey, I was playing and I thought you might like this. So she stuck a bunch of these in an envelope and put some stamps on it and sent it to me. And I thought, that is so fun because she wanted to share what she was creating. And don't you love it? I just think it's the coolest thing ever. This is our writers and writing uh, signature. Got a little bit of literature in here and language. This is... Um, it's uh, The Three Musketeers by... Um, Duma. Now hang on a second and I'll see if I can't find, there we go. This is the, uh, the book that it came from and you can see the notation on the top of the book it says 1876 which I just think is so cool. My company when I had a company was called Moonstruck Promotions. Uh, she went out of business in December of 2017 but her motto was one for all, all for one, which is the motto of the Three Musketeers. So I was very tickled to um, to see this in Carol's box. So it's just super neato, super neato. Thank you for sending that along. I've got some uh, Japanese text for you. I believe this is German. I love the illustrations on these on these German texts, and especially love the the different kinds of paper that you find here. This is an article about fans, and it, this is an Italian 16th century fan. I thought that was really appropriate since I have um, had a big dose of <laughs> the 16th century of late. Uh, this is sheet music and it's signed by the person who purchased the sheet music and I think her name is Mary Ann Springer. Very pretty. It features Jean Harlow and Cary Grant on the front. Some German sheet music for you. Um, a page from the Bobsy Twins and I love that. The Bobsy Twins were on my uh, grandma's bookshelf when I was a little girl. I did not read the Bobsy Twins, oddly. Um, but it was there along with some Hardy Boys and I think a biography of John F. Kennedy, of course a Bible, 
Um, it would be a neat kind of retrospective to try and remember exactly what was on that shelf because I sure did look at it for a whole lot of years. We've got a smattering of vintage uh, cards for you. I love this one. Happy birthday to a heap big boy. Wahoo! Hope your birthday is the kind that you'll enjoy and brings heap big surprises that will make you say, oh boy. Sorry this is so late, Georgie, but we've kept Mommy closeted for 10 days with our bad colds. This was our first day out. Mommy sure did seem glad to get out. Hmm, wonder why. Hope your birthday was lots of fun. Love and kisses. Lynn and Mark. Lynn and Mark. Isn't that neat? So we've got salvaged handwriting on a vintage card, probably from... I don't know, um, maybe 1953. Um, a beautiful envelope, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1919. Look at that stamp. Isn't that neato? And a postcard. Uh, this postcard is from um, Animals Class at Polynesia. And it is to the staff at uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, the Department of Medicine at Hartford Hospital. I love things like this. It's signed May 21st, 1995. I like markers. I like identifying uh, people and places uh, in, in time. So I thought that you guys would really, really enjoy those. We've got a vintage playing card for you. I love this card. Oh, birdie. We are out of the birdie element, and I had a little bit of time to make some skinny books for you guys as well. Um, we've got some Florence fashion in here, and uh, this is a little article about Burano. I loved the storefront. This is so indicative. This is exactly what you see when you're in... Um, especially in Venice. You, you know, I, I'm sure that you guys have understood that I've just really gravitated to Venice. This, these are the multicolor houses in Burano. I, I can't say enough about the, the colors, um, how, how very beautiful they were, the, you know, absolute attention to detail um, in the, you know, in the placement of flowers. Uh, we did see a uh, a lady outside working in her garden, and it was just a delight to see because she was growing all kinds of things. Got some mimeograph paper for you. That's a big throwback, isn't it? These are pattern directions. A lovely piece of a, a statuary I thought was just gorgeous. Um, but like I said, there's a real attention to detail. Um, in, in Venice, in Murano, in Burano, I, I just really did notice it. And uh, this, is the, this is the actual lace shop that we visited when we were in, um, when we were in Barona, after we visited Murano. Ma That's not right. Uh, yeah, Murano, uh, Burano. And Murano was a, uh, that was an adventure and a half that I'll tell you about later. Uh, attention to detail. That's kind of what we were talking about. I, um, my sister cleverly arranged all of our hotel accommodations at places that provided a continental breakfast. Later I would learn that most places do provide you a continental breakfast, and it is spectacular. But one morning, um, I would wake up early and kind of try and get out of my sister and my brother-in-law's way. So I woke up early one morning and uh, went over to have breakfast at the cafe, which was in, within walking distance. Some of the hotels had uh, a place where they set up a continental breakfast. Um, the last hotel that we stayed at in Rome was like a micro hotel, and they did not have a room to do that. But I, um, I got my coffee. I was going to get my coffee, and the server had... Now get this, a white napkin was placed over the coffee pot to show that the coffee was brewing. And um, I just, you know, I was standing there with my cup and the server said, oh, let me check this for you. She took off the white napkin. She took my cup out of my hand. Um, she said, let me do this for you. And uh, put my cup on a saucer and uh, proceeded to pour my coffee 
And when she was pouring the coffee in the cup, she took it off the saucer, put it on a, a metal plate that was sitting under the coffee station, and poured coffee that way. So none of the, you know, the coffee splatters or the drips would get on her perfectly white tablecloth there. Now that's attention to detail, y'all. That's... Um, that service, it, it was just such a pleasant thing. So she puts my coffee cup back on my saucer and gives me two packets of sugar. Now, typically, I don't drink sugar with my coffee or milk. I drink uh, black coffee. I drink a splash of milk first thing in the morning with my coffee. And then the rest of the time, it's black coffee. Drinking black coffee right now, as a matter of fact. Um, and But I discovered that coffee in Rome is super strong. Um, so that is, I thought, well, she put two packets of sugar here, so let's let's try the two packets of sugar. And, uh, oh my gosh, it like took the bitter out of the coffee. I wasn't quite used to that strong of coffee. This signature just has some paper pieces in it. 1972 teacher's manual uh, for mathematics. A little bit about wrestling, martial arts, and fencing. Uh, when we went to uh, one of the museums, and I think it was in Venice, uh, we saw the arms room where they would keep the sabers and the swords and the actual armor. It was called the armory. Um, that was something to see. I love a good sword, y'all. Uh, another uh, page from the 1972 Mathematics Teaching Handbook. And, uh, you know, mm, uh, quick books for the 80s. <laughs> This is from the 1960 Audell's DIY book, Using the Right Paint for Your House. I mean, who paints their own house anymore, right? I am going to have to paint my house, but I'm going to paint it inside. I would not try and even tackle that outside. How to provide a helpful environment, a helpful home environment. This is from the 1942 Red Cross Nursing Manual. So you've got some 1942, you've got some 1960. I love this because somebody is learning to play, uh, play bridge. Uh, and I love the salvaged handwriting. I am all about the salvaged handwriting. Love it, love it, love it. Rules for New York Hearts and Black Jack. And this is the official rules of card games. And there's a vintage playing card right here that looks like it would go along really perfectly with that. This is a bridge tally. And this is Becky's bridge tally from who knows when. Always date your stuff, y'all. It might be interesting to somebody like me in, you know, 50 years. <laughs> a hold ticket uh, for, uh, I think I told you guys, I used to work in an upscale dress shop, and we use this kind of hold ticket. This is just a smattering of fun papers for you to play with. There's uh, a stamped image, a little bit of this architecture's... Um, this is such great stuff, and you can just pull it off and use it. You can cut it up. It, it's really kind of like a miraculous thing. And a little busy bee for you to play with as well. This journal, Splat, will go in the shop a little later on this afternoon. Isn't she pretty? Doesn't she just make you smile? Makes me smile. Um, this, like I said, this, this little thing flew off the shelf last week, and there's just something about the yellow, the orange, the gray, the white together that, um, I thought it was pretty, and apparently lots of other people thought it was pretty, too. Finished off pretty simply with a mixture of glass beads, and, uh, I found these on sale. Now, these are plastic, um, plastic, um, metal-ish looking beads. What do they call these? Like etched? Maybe etched beads. Hold on. There we go. Etched beads. So let's look in here real quick and see what we got going on. Once Upon a Time starts us out. And washi tape. This is awesome. I found washi tape at my dollar store. I had never even looked at the stuff that they have in there uh, for journals and planning and that kind of thing. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. So I got like six rolls of this little skinny 
tape for, you know, a buck, which was cool. I thought since we had Once Upon a Time that that kind of made me think about, um, you know, fall and, and, and Once Upon a Time as far as fairy tales go. And then, so I pulled out this little fall... Um, fall table spread, which was just beautiful. I think this is from the 1988 um, Country Homes magazine. A little bit of old advertising for you. Look at this state of the art kitchen in 1988. Wow. And I also love this because there's a crochet napkin and a tablecloth on the back of here. It's very pretty. Lots of fun papers for you to play with. The 1988 Boyd's Collection envelopes and cards just fun a little bit of, uh, of inspiration for you that says bloom Ca uh, gales coffee dyed index cards which i gotta try as soon as it gets warm i mean look at me guys it's may the 8th and i am wearing fleece <laughs> it's gotta warm up mama needs some sun <laughs> This is a, a little pocket of things for you to play with. More, more um, little flowers, paper flowers. I love these because you can just do so many things with them. And a pack of buttons for you guys. Now these are 15 cent buttons. So I am thinking they're big time vintage. Not sure exactly how vintage they are though, but buttons look really cool in those little paper flowers. This card says dream and of course this says your journey. Again, I think that is that Carol or Kathy? Hold on. It was Kathy. I've started putting your names on things so I can give you credit. <laughs> A ship. Uh, this is our texture signature. You guys know what is in here and how much fun it is to build texture. This one features a skeleton key right here that you can alter. Some tags. Be joyful. Oh my goodness. Just be joyful, man. Stop complaining. Just be joyful. There is always something to be joyful about. Find five things right this minute and tell me what you appreciate in the comments below. Five things. Go. I'm appreciating just being able to hold this book. I'm appreciating being able to see this book. I'm appreciating that you guys obviously appreciate things like this artwork. I'm appreciating that you appreciate it. I'm appreciating all of you guys that send me things to use in these books. All of you who pass along your gifts are just, it's a phenomenal thing to be a witness to all of that. We've got our language and writing signature. This is the Confessions of St. Augustine, written in Latin with an English translation. Look at the colors of these vintage papers. I just think it, that's extraordinary. Love it, love it, love it. More language for you. This is French. This is German. Um, this is an article from that same magazine that had the, uh, the article about fans, but this time it's about decorating. I'm not sure what the year was on that. This is Nielsen Ephemera, and also more Nielsen Ephemera for Daddy. Flocking. Congratulations, a baby announcement. And like I said, things like this are usually signed on the back of the card. I'm not sure where this started. I mean, why would you sign something on the back of a card? But it's very common for it to be on the back of a card. Um, this is signed. I know that this is Georgie because we've got a lot of scribbles from Georgie around 1953 before he learned to write his name. The Nelson Ephemera is from 1947, that beautiful envelope. Never discount your packaging, y'all. Um, packaging makes all kinds of cool things, especially things like tags and cards and stuff like that. You know, it's got come with a pre-made hole in it, great for just sticking some fibers through, and then you can decorate it any way you want to. Vintage cards, a bad badger or a beaver? I think it might be a beaver. It's a badger, I think, or maybe a groundhog. We have a beaver that has been coming in our yard, which is kind of confusing. Uh, we are 
close to the river, but not that close. There's a creek down the road, so we're thinking that maybe it's coming from the creek. I'm not sure, but he is lots of fun to watch, especially when he gets tangled up with the kitty cats that seem to roam wild around this neighborhood. This is an architecture's piece for you to play with. This is from Seven Gypsies, and it features suitcases. Also, I mean, look at that packaging, y'all. Seven Gypsies has some of the greatest packaging on the planet, for sure. It's very inspiring just to... Uh, just to see their, their packaging. We've got more of the Venice ephemera for you to play with, to look at, to swoon over. This is an information about walking tour and gondolas, discover Venice and gondola rides inside Venice. Skip the line. You never skip the line, so just keep that in mind, y'all. Um, more Venice ephemera. I like the, um, the, the thing on the other side of this. Uh, contemporary art, all the best of Venice. I tell you people, it's exactly like that. It's like a picture postcard. Absolutely like a picture postcard that you just fall into and you, you actually never want to leave. This was from a kayak rental place. A silent tour in the quiet water of the sleeping city. The thrill of waiting for the magic of the sun rising from the water. So uh, this is from a kayak rental place in Venice if you're into that kind of thing. You know me not swimming. I am definitely don't want to kayak. It looks fun. This is from St. Mark's Basilica. Um, some pressed flowers for you to play with. I love this. This is, um, these are uh, vegetable, these are um, recipe cards. Look at that. Isn't that neat? I don't know how old that is, but it looks super cool. I love typewriter writing. Oh my gosh, I gotta get out my typewriter. This is, uh, features the store that outfits the gondoliers. So they have a very um, specific indicative hat. They wear certain things. Very, very cool to see that. A little bit of fashion for you. Some J. Peterman. Some uh, fashion how-to. Some fabric how-to. And these I cut from a magazine. I thought she was so cute. Bless her little soul. The Cook's Advisor. I loved all of this. And I think this is from 1988. Uh, because it had state-of-the-art cooking equipment in it. That included knives, and wow, look, calculate calories by computer. Now, what would they say about calculating calculating calories by something that you wear on your wrist or your phone? Calculate calories on your phone. <laughs> Velvet and silk, true Venetian handmade. And our sweet umbrella guy ends up this little journal. This... Um, this closure, y'all, is one of those things where you might have to kind of pick it up with your fingernail and slide the string under it, just like that. Sorry, the I can't see the, um, there's a shadow right there. And I also wanted to let you guys know that I am developing these wheezings for the shop. This is my um, this is my little prototype, but I think it's coming along nicely. I'll fill it with inspirational sayings and inspirational pictures and and things like that. And it's also got a couple journaling cards up here and a journaling card here, as well as one in the very back. I think they're sweet little things, and they could, you know, you could send them as a um, as a small Cersei to uh, to folks over the summer. You could use it as a uh, to log a day trip or a special event or a special occasion. I think they're lot, they're going to be lots of fun. They're lots of fun for me to put together, and I am going to be super happy to share some with you guys in my shop probably next week. Thank you for hanging out with me. Happy, happy, happy Tuesday, and I will see you soon. I appreciate you guys. Bye-bye.